Sometimes there is a word in scripture that is a little hard to describe, like in our seventh matter. But there are other times when a word in its original context practically jumps off the page and slaps you in the face. The eighth matter is definitely the latter. I would be hard pressed to find any of you who are watching who have not had an experience with this matter. I can also guess that the majority of those experiences took place according to the biblical definition of the word we will be looking at in this eighth matter that still matters to God, and I am convinced still matters to you. My name is Keith Johnson of Biblical Foundations Academy International. Our mission is to inspire people around the world to build a biblical foundation for their faith. Welcome to Scripture Bites. I have decided to illustrate this eighth matter by doing this entire scripture bite in the dark. Just kidding. However, I am giving you a hint about what this scripture bite is about. CB, please upload our control verse for this eighth matter. It is Exodus chapter 20 verse 15 in the King James Version. Thou shalt not steal. I realize what I'm expected to do in this process of discovery, but I would like to try something a little different this time just to see if I can keep your attention. CB, please find a verse that has two different English words for steal, but make sure that those words are from the same root as the word in our control verse. We have not yet displayed the Hebrew root word behind the English word steal. CB, how long will you taunt me by stating the obvious? I wrote this program. Please find a verse of your choosing that has two different English words for the same Hebrew word found in our control verse. It's your program. Here you go. Thank you, CB. We only have two more scripture bites after this one with this version of the scripture bites interface. And the people got them by stealth that day into the city as people being ashamed steal away when they flee in battle. Second Samuel chapter 19 verse 3 KJV. I can just about guarantee you that the King James translators used the word stealth and steal away for the same word but in different verbal forms, as the word behind our scripture bite word, steal, in the control verse. CB, now you can display the control verse in the source scroll with vowels, please. Lo tignov. The words lo tignov mean you shall not steal. Now let's take another look at the second Samuel 19 verse CB displayed with the words stealth and steal away and see if I was right. Okay, those are all the words that you see. As you can see, the first and the eighth words look similar to our word tigno. Now bear with me as I explain why the English words are different. First things first, grammar alert. Our word tigno is a calimperfect second person masculine singular verb. Its three letter Hebrew root ganav has been prefixed with a consonant tav with a hyric vowel that lets me know that it's in the imperfect verb in the second person masculine form, just like the key words in matters six and seven. The cow stem could be translated as the easy stem of the seven main verbal stems that exist in biblical Hebrew. But the two words in the CB verse, 2 Samuel 19, are in what is called the Hittpiel stem, which is primarily a reflexive form, meaning they hid themselves. Thus, the translators decided on got them by stealth and also people steal away. Unfortunately, that is about as deep as we can go with this version of our SBI. But between you and me, check out the 3T mini series for a more advanced version with more to come. I hope. Let's move on to the source word Tignov to see what we can learn. It is used 59 times in the scroll source in three different forms. The number of different forms are three to steal, thief, and theft. Based on our earlier interaction with variant verb forms in which the root word for tignov is translated as steal, I am curious if the KJV translators did anything different with the exact same form that appears in our scroll source. CB, can you display the first two times the exact same verb form of the Hebrew word tignov is used in the scroll? And Laban said to Jacob, what hast thou done? that thou hast stolen away unawares to me and carried away my daughters as captives taken with the sword. Genesis 31, 26, KJV. 
Wherefore didst thou flee away secretly and steal away from me and didst not tell me that I might have sent thee away with mirth and with songs, with tabret and with harp? Genesis 31 in the KJV. Well, isn't this convenient? The first two times our word is seen in this exact form is in two consecutive verses. But I just am not satisfied with only looking at one translation on this issue. CB, please display my favorite English translation of the same two verses. Please clarify what version you are referring to as your favorite. M my favorite official English translation is the New American Standard Bible. There are several reasons, but mostly because it tends to provide what may be called a more literal or word-for-word -word translation from the Hebrew. However, this is a huge generalization and it is not always the case, but for me, it is my favorite official English translation. My favorite unofficial version is none other than the SBI version, alias the Keith Johnson version, KJV. Not to be confused with the KJV King James version. <laughs> when I do serious scripture study, I always like to have the original Hebrew or Greek as source text, along with at least two English versions in order to compare and contrast. Now, can you display my favorite English translation of these two verses so we can move on? Then Laban said to Jacob, what have you done by deceiving me and carrying away my daughters like captives of the sword? Genesis 31 in ASB. Why did you flee secretly and deceive me and did not tell me so that I might have sent you away with joy and with songs and with timbrel and with lyre? Genesis 31 in ASB. Folks, this is really interesting. The exact same word tignov translated as steal in multiple English versions is translated as steal away and stolen away in the King JV in the above two verses, but is translated as deceiving and deceive in the NASB. We may have hit a major snag on this one. Seriously, we need to dig a little deeper regarding the word tignov to see what it gives my favorite English translation, the chutzpah to stray so far away from the expected translation of steal and end up with the word deceive. Well, I guess I should let you know that the NASB has used 46 different English words for the Hebrew root word ganav. A small sampling of those words includes actually, away, brought, carries, deceive, fact, kidnap, steal, and stealth, to name a few. Of course, what we want to know is the intended meaning of the word in its original language and context. This is where a lexicon like Brown Driver Briggs is helpful. CB, that was supposed to be a hint to open up the BDB. Ah, ganav, it's a verb. In the cal, the steal. Take for stealth, for good purpose, equals deceive of sudden sweeping off by storm. As we see, there can be some latitude of meaning when the word is in the cal stem. Steal, deceive, and take by stealth. This helps us understand that the NASB translators considered the possible meanings of ganav and chose to render it as deceive. There is one other grammatical aspect I failed to mention about the small but important two-letter word lo that we have seen in our terse but tense two-word matters. CD, please open up Gesenius Hebrew Grammar, section 107-0. Oh. On the issue of lo, connected with an imperfect verb. To express the definite expectation that something will not happen, the imperfect with lo represents an emphatic form of prohibition and corresponds to our thou shalt not do it with the strongest expectation of obedience. Thus lo with the imperfect is especially used in enforcing the divine commands. Example, lo tigno, thou shalt not steal. Earlier, we looked at the first two occurrences of tigno, the same form that appears in our control verse. However, the very first time that word appears in the scriptures, it is in the third person feminine form, not masculine. We find it in Genesis chapter 31 verse 19 in the account of Rachel's secret theft of the teraphim or household gods of her father Laban. When Laban had gone to shear his flock, then Rachel stole the household idols that were her father's. Genesis 31 19. Later, when Laban discovered the theft, he accused his son-in-law Jacob of having done it. Jacob, unaware that Rachel had stolen the idols, declared his innocence to Laban and proceeded to pronounce a curse on the thief. Quote, the one with whom you find your God shall not live. For Jacob did not know that Rachel had stolen them. Genesis 31 verse 32. At the time this occurred, Rachel was pregnant with her second child. A short time later, she died during childbirth. 
The text doesn't specifically state this, but it could be that Rachel's untimely death came as a result of the curse that Jacob unwittingly pronounced on her for her theft. Of course, not every act of stealing brings such immediate and severe consequences. But the fact that this episode that contains the first uses of the verb tignov ought to help us understand why thou shalt not steal is a matter that still matters a great deal to God. Okay, folks, I think you get the idea of the importance of this topic. Now let's learn this verse with our minds and hide it in our hearts. Nice and slow, one word at a time. Lo tigno. Lo tigno. You shall not steal. Exodus 20 verse 15 NASB and Scripture Bites version. By the way, did anyone figure out why I started the Scripture Bite in the dark? Most thieves operate under stealth in the dark when and where they can't be easily seen. <laughs> oh well, at least I understood my reasoning for doing that illustration. Until next time, keep reading, watching, and studying. This is your SBI assistant. Did you enjoy this scripture bite? If so, share it with your friends. Be sure to become a free member at bfainternational.com to download a PDF companion study guide for this edition of Scripture Bites. Visit bfainternational.com today to join the conversation.